Warning, this video is for comedy purposes only and as such should not be taken too seriously. <laughs> oh man, this really made me laugh yet again. This anime just keeps knocking it out the park with this second season, which I got to say I am enjoying far more than season 1, which was good, don't get me wrong, it's just not quite as great as this season so far. I also want to take this opportunity to thank everyone for being such an awesome community and not spoiling anything for anyone. That was incredibly cool of all of you, so thank you. So yeah, back on point, this was really funny, so I'll remove a sin here. <laughs> Oh my fucking god, this is not the time to be getting all sentimental. This bitch got turned down by a guy and in response she decided to basically team up with the bad guy and kill all of the children and the guy she said she loved so much. It makes me laugh that now she's in trouble the students are all like, I know she wanted to literally murder all of us children, but we love her really. Fuck that noise and fuck her. She deserves to die in my book for what she's just done. But I'm guessing that's not gonna happen, is it? Unrealistic blood splattering. I mean, this does happen in anime a lot where blood just spurts out like crazy, but in reality, it kind of pours out of a big wound. Trust me, the whole blood spurting thing is so rare, it's insane. And if it does happen, it's still nothing like that. How do I know this? Well, there's a lot about me you don't know just yet. Give it time. Dude, you really going to explain everything and have a chat right now? Just kill the bloody bastard. So he brought that juice with him, right? Does that mean he thought he might need to pretend that someone was bleeding and so stopped by the shop on the way to buy some juice to fake this? And oh my god, there's no point going through all of this because that wouldn't happen. Okay, so one thing I really don't understand here. Are we being led to believe that he in fact wasn't a ghost or whatever in the start of the battle with the kids? I mean, he was disappearing and shit, so I figured that's what was going on. But now he's remained physical the entire time. It's just so damn confusing! <laughs> what an amazingly beautiful curved hall. I've always admired the structural engineering needed to produce such a feat. But yeah, I'll remove a sin here for the gorgeous, sexy looking hallway. Yay, she's back. She only tried to kill like two dozen children by drowning them alive. So it's not like it's a big deal or anything. Fucking not. I would normally just add one sin here. I mean, you guys know my style. But here, we're not just talking about murder. We're talking about drowning children alive. I mean, I can think of only a few worse ways to die, but this is probably up there on most people's lists. So the fact that all is forgiven so quickly is annoying as hell to me. So here, I'll give five sins. <laughs> No! <laughs> Jesus, this sure as hell got dark and came out of bloody nowhere. The only downside to this is that I've seen a few comments which basically ended up spoiling this moment for me. So that's a shame, as knowing me I'd have been truly shocked. Either way though, it's great how it mixes things up like this so suddenly. So I'll remove the sin here. 
Not to break the whole feeling of what's going on here during this intense scene, but I just have to mention one tiny little thing. You could have just picked up the phone and ordered in. You can do that online now. It's super easy. Okay, I'll get back to it now, but just for future reference, you know. On a serious note, this entire conversation and the many others before it could have been solved by the kid just telling her to please shut the f up. It looks scary, but in reality, she's only bloody yelling. And I'm telling you all of the plan because I'm a professional assassin who only just happens to be a blubbermouth. Changing the colour of his face in front of the mother, and yet he went through all of the trouble of putting on the disguise in the first place. We now return to Food Wars Season 3. Who were the judges going to pick as the best dish of the day? Get back to assassinating! Okay guys, so strap in for a long chat here. Or longish anyway. You know I don't drag these things on. Here I want to say that I watched all of episode 10 and that I honestly couldn't think of any other sin than the first one and even that was just a silly one. This episode has been my favourite so far because we got to see all of these old faces from the past season all coming together in a big way. We had some moments that had me bursting out laughing and others that made me feel a little emotional. It was an absolutely fantastic episode and it's made me really look forward to the rest of the season. For all of the above and much more, I'll remove three sins here. God damn, this is one obsessed motherfucker. He just cannot let them be up there, even knowing the details of what they're trying to do and how it will save the world, and all he can do is constantly try to make their lives harder in one way or another. He's an annoying bastard, truth be bloody told. Who really cares? It's not your money. This woman's acting like he's taking money directly from them. If the bosses up top in the government didn't like it, then they'd soon make something happen. But for some unknown reason, that's never happened yet in this anime, despite the huge secret that's involved with the school and the principal. Yeah, that's all well and good, but how has he got them in the palm of his hand exactly? These are government officials, and he's a principal at a high school. Or maybe even what comes before high school over there. I can't really remember 100%. I must say that they're going to have to try and explain this stuff away pretty soon, because it's sinful as hell that these normal students are turning into mindless zombies within three minutes of being spoken to about a class that they likely, beforehand, never gave a crap about. They can't just keep explaining it away by saying he's got charisma. Hell, he's more of a witch doctor or something creepy like that at the moment. Yes, that's exactly what he just said. But thanks for confirming regardless. I just want to quickly say that I'm a huge fan of the monster encounters they do during these tests. I think it was a really clever way to do it instead of a montage of them all studying and writing at their desks, which would be a little boring, I guess. But yeah, the monsters they face are really awesome looking, so I'll take away another sin here. And please don't say I'm taking away too many. I think it's pretty fair overall. Whilst he was loading his imaginary weapon, this loud and slightly annoying sounding imaginary monster kept firing but missing entirely in his head. So... Ding! I guess? Where's your nose? Don't 
Double saying someone's name instead of talking normally cliches. Don't worry though, it's just two sins. I highly doubt we will end up going to the depths of hell with it like we did with High School DxD Season 3 with over 10 million sins. But it's something I'll be keeping my eye on. But for now, just two sins will do. Everyone says his name at the exact same time, but that's not considered the same as the previous cliche as this is more about saying hello and showing respect. Just all at the same time. Did they practice this beforehand, given that they all spoke the same line at the same time? I'd normally be unsure and not bother giving a sim, but considering these guys were certain that with the studying they were getting that they'd definitely win for sure, I'm doubtful. So for now, I'm going to simply say, everyone says the same line at the same time cliche. <laughs> I bet no one calls the police. I mean, I don't know yet, but it's a safe enough bet, so I'll go ahead and sit it for now. <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe that a construction company wouldn't at least send someone inside to quickly check and make sure it's empty before they start tearing the place down. Probably the printer from his office? Could he not have proposed this deal first before he went ahead and destroyed part of the school's building? I get the reason why he became what he did, and by the way that was a really big shock for me, but the one way his line of teaching doesn't really add up is the whole sacrificing others to get ahead. Making your students strong is one thing, but if a bunch of them are weaker and get stepped on, then it's the same thing which happened to the first young lad. <laughs> You could start by saying you're fucking sorry for hitting him, 